the right way of measuring Argentine deficit is comparing the debt in the period T minus the debt in the period T minus one. If you do that, the deficit is higher than of what I will present to you. It is now with great pleasure that I introduce to you our mid-morning keynote speaker. Mr. Ricardo Lopez Murphy has been a consultant for the International Monetary Fund, the Program for Development of the United Nations, the World Bank, the CEPAL, and IBD. Additionally, he has been an advisor for, for the central banks of Argentina and Uruguay. Mr. Lopez Murphy has also served as chief economist for FIEL and a professor at UBA UADE San Andres and the La Plata Universities in Argentina. From 1999 to 2001, Mr. Lopez Murphy was defense minister for Argentina and later, ser later served as prime minister of finance and infrastructure. Currently, Mr. Lopez Murphy is a private consultant and the leader of the political party Recrear Argentina. In 2002, Mr. M Lopez Murphy ran for president of Argentina, obtaining more than three million votes and consolidating himself and Recrear Argentina as major political references in that country. Mr. Lopez Murphy received a master's degree in economics from the University of Chicago and a bachelor's degree in economics from, from Universidad Nacional de La Plata in Argentina. Please welcome Ricardo Lopez Murphy. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here again after 24 years. I hope when I left this city many years ago, that I will come back to tell all of you how well we have performed. Unfortunately, that dream of my young years was not fulfilled. I will tell you a sad story. But when you love someone, and I love my country a lot. It is better, and I learned from this university, to take a professional approach. When you love really, you are very professional. And I will try to tell you why we suffer such a meltdown and give you some ideas of what are our main problems and try to explain our outlook. The plan of my, lay, of my speech is the following. First of all, we will review the main reason of the crisis. Then I will try to go over the recent development, the recovery, quote unquote. Why we have a recovery after such a mel meltdown. And then we will see carefully, and I reserve all the jokes for that time, about what are our real problems, and we have a lot of them. But uh, let me go to the end of the speech to, to address the, those issues. And uh, I promise that I am sad now, but I will be funny at the end. I, I learned here in Chicago that you have to be optimist. Uh, yesterday I, I met with some student and they asked me what I remember. And I remember many things, but when I, I was leaving Chicago, Professor Schultz, I visited him and he said to me, what did you learn? I was furious at that moment because the Argentine government called me to come back to Argentina and I want to remain here writing this, my dissertation. Well, obviously I was not very happy at that moment. I had to leave uh, Chicago. Uh, and I, s I, said, I said to him, and I, I'm sorry now, but uh, it's a good, a good story. I said, I learned to be tough. I will be able to overcome any problems because I, I, I had to deal with several difficult 
questions, several difficult problems. If you if you have been a student of Mr. Gary Becker, you you know what I mean. Uh, anxious, smiled, and said to me two things that were very important in my life. He listened carefully and said, "Be careful with the budget. It's not." only an economic problem. It's an institutional and cultural problem. And even in the last meeting, they were teaching me something. And this is what I learned from Chicago. Use every opportunity to clarify the issues, to try to understand what is going on. And use your, your scientific knowledge. What you learn in economics will help you and your people a lot. And I tried during all my life to use this method methodology. Well, we are ready to go. Next. What were the reasons of our failure? Why we suffer such a crisis after the attempt of perhaps one of the <coughs> largest reform process in the emerging countries? Why? after trying so hard during the 90s to reform all our economic institution, we end so bad. First, we saw, as you know, we have uh, a monetary uh, institution that was the currency board. The currency board was one dollar is equal to one peso. So we cannot issue money or, uh, except against reserves. Why that fail? Because that was like putting a straight jacket over, over you. Why somebody willingly will put a straight jacket? You know the others, you have to force them to put on a straight jacket. We put a straight jacket over us because we were afraid of ourselves. That is the key to understand the problem of currency bond. But in any case, we follow during the, let me go, over a point that I, I put not in my chart, but it's important. We went to the currency board after 21,000% a year inflation. After erasing from our currency 13 zeros in 20 year period. Each zero means 1,000% devaluation. Remember of that. Well, we try the evaluation as much as we can. We don't want to have any doubt about uh, uh, that receipt. But uh, we thought that if we can put control over monetary aggregates or the way we issue money, we will be able to overcome our lack of discipline. That was not true. The key problem was the fiscal policy. We have very large deficit coming from an incredible increase in public expenditure. And that was uh, a very, uh, the, the key problem, the cornerstone of all our difficulties. Under a very orthodox monetary policy, but a totally lack of orthodoxy in fiscal policy. Like Pedro Aspe mentioned before, this is the, the key problem we suffer. Go. <laughs> we receive also something that uh, you can call bad luck. Uh, no, what I mean bad luck was almost a perfect storm. Uh, <laughs> let me say why. We receive at the same time several shocks. And the shocks produce something nobody was able to forecast before. Let me say, when we studied the currency board at the end of the 80s to have some tool to deal with the hyperinflation, the idea that we have in mind that was that the inflation rate of the US dollar that will be the, our anchor was 4% a year. Uh, if you compare 1989 uh, against 1929, the inflation rate was 1,000%. That was, in our mind, the idea that there was an inflation rate implicit, embodied in the dollar of 4% a year. 
we discover during the nineties that you let let me tell you another, another thing. We check using another treasury. After the Second World War, we check the dollar against the other currency, against the Deutsche Mark at the yen. The Deutsche Mark went from 4.2 to something like 1.5. The yen from 360 to something like 100. We say we will anchor, but we will anchor to a soft currency. Remember that, because that was the, the, the underlying assumption. That's what I mean by bad luck. I mean by bad luck that during the 90s, the inflation rate in dollar relevant for Argentine was negative, was not in the order of 40, 50 percent a, a decade, was minus seven, relevant for us. And we were uh, having uh, that idea of underlying inflation rate in the dollar that was not true. We also thought, let me, let me give you another point. We also thought that the United States behavior in the 90s was, we, we will, would not be what it was. Well, in uh, November 1992, I remember in the Argentine Treasury after the Clinton election, they were, uh, you know, uh, toasty. They said, we have problem, but now with uh, Clinton in charge, they will have more deficit, and well, in the end, we will have more inflation than we all have. As you remember, we suffered during the 90s the most disciplined president of the United States, I mean in monetary and fiscal affairs. <laughs> uh, but that, that is what I mean by, by, by bad luck, bad luck in the sense of what we have in our uh, long run projection. The, the crisis spreads in the Asian crisis, the commodity price fall a lot, the Russian crisis means for us uh, the, they close the window of loans. We used to have a lot of dependence on natural resources, on capital market, and on our neighbor uh, trade. We were very related with our neighbor. In 1999, in 1997, we suffered the Asian crisis. Crisis in 1998, the Russia crisis. In 1999, the Brazilian crisis. In the year 2000, the meltdown of the high risk investment, I mean the NASDAQ, everything was against us. And that is the seasonal negative external shock. Next. Well, and we suffer, as Pedro said, a problem of political leadership. We were not able to deal with the issues. We have bad institutional framework, and our leadership was not able to deal with the issues, to collect support, to, to, to bring uh, a, a right answer to very difficult uh, situation. Next. What would I mean by weak fiscal policy? Government expenditure increased by more than the GDP adjusted by the price of tradables. This is behind the, the overvaluation of the pesos. Primary surplus, moreover, was not increased to offset the impact of growing uh, interest payment. Uh, we finance, uh, let me say something, as you mentioned, Enron, that's important. In Argentina, we suffer also from creative accounting. Uh, the way we define deficit is not the way other countries define deficit. We put a lot of expenditure in off-budget account. Uh, the right way of measuring Argentine deficit is comparing the debt in the period T minus the debt in the period T minus one. If you do that, the deficit is higher than of what I will present to you. But I learned also from this school that uh, 
if I can prove the case for the most uh, advantage point of view, the other is uh, <laughs> I, I have not to, to, to do other things. Well, one of the key problems is the design of intergovernmental transfer in Argentina. Our revenue sharing mechanism is a crazy one. Uh, let me say you, I was professor of public finance in Argentina for more than 20 years. I, I was very demanding one as a professor. And I, all of my students ask the, the following question. If you can explain to me the coefficient that uh, made their sharing of our revenue sharing system, I will be give you A. Don't ask any other problem. If you can answer that 20, 20 years, I asked the same question. Nobody was able to answer. We have a system that is uh, very difficult to explain, and perhaps what that was one of the key why we suffer the problem of lack of control in public finance. Let me give you an idea of what I mean by that. Our provinces can spend and uh, finance spending using as a collateral the transfer of the federal government is uh, using that collateral, they spend, they spend, they spend, and they know that in the end, they will bail out by the federal government. It's like I invite all of you to a very expensive restaurant in Chicago, and you see the Pedro Aspe ca uh, credit card. <laughs> I will be very generous, because there is no incentives uh, rel relation. That is something that we know, I wrote several books about that. We know how to address, we know the answer, but the, the political economy of solving the problem is a very difficult question. We put a fiscal responsibility law, but um, that's a very sad story. We violate at the first year. The, we have like in Maastricht uh, tri uh, treaty some uh, ceilings. We violate at the first year the ceiling. And that was the problem of trust. In the panel, they talk about trust. But if we violate in the first year the fiscal responsibility law, somebody, some political leader in Argentina told me the other day, don't worry. Look, Germany and France also violate the massive tra treaty. It's not so important, I mean, it's not the same Germany and France that I will say. <laughs> but the, that idea that the, the law is not very important uh, and you can do whatever you need, that is perhaps the key problem to understand in our uh, difficulties. Well, tax evasion is, uh, is very important. Let me give you an example. I, I'm sorry, I, I'm very enthusiastic. I will not follow exactly my presentation. Let me, let me give you an example of what I mean by tax evasion. Spain has the same population of Argentina, almost the same. They have, in the social security uh, in payment, almost 70, 17 million. Uh, uh, I mean, 17. We have the same population, only five. What is the difference? The difference is the moonlighters. I mean, we have a lot of people working, but they declare themselves a tax cent. <laughs> they say we will not fulfill. And that is a very important point, because if you design the tax system, Somebody, Luis Ramirez, mentioned the problem of tax evasion as uh, a problem of competition. But trying to understand what do we mean by that, we have an incredible high taxes. I will say almost Swedish tax rate. But the quality of our public service is like in underdeveloped Africa. If you combine both, 
you have a disaster. And that is something that is behind the crisis, but is behind all the problems we have to solve in the future. The tax evasion under uh, the effort we did during the 90s was perhaps one of the most uh, difficult areas we have to face. Now, today, Argentina has incredible taxes. And the problem is uh, larger, larger than anybody think. It's not paid. And it's the, the way they compete is through that way. OK, next one. Well, that are the numbers. Pay attention to the travel prices. That is the, a decade. In the decade, the nominal price of our export and import was falling. Was falling. It's not terms of trade. It's the price of export and import. They were falling in nominal terms. Remember that the implicit assumption was the inflation rate behind that was 40%. OK, next. Well, that is uh, the public debt. Pay attention to this. We were under convertibility, under the currency board during all this period. The debt was increasing and increasing and increasing. Well, the, the explosion is because of the valuation. Nobody believe us. They, they lent us in dollars. When we devalue, the, the burden of the debt increased several times. Uh, for example, our former president, Mr. Menem, said that we were fulfilling almost all the Maastricht uh, criteria. That was not true. The most important one, something that I learned in the Department of Economics of the Chicago University, what is the price of public expenditure? What is the, the cost of crowding out? Is the interest rate, the, sh the spread you pay on public debt? And I learned here the cost is higher than that price because you substitute private investment that is paying taxes over that return. And our spread over the treasuries were in peso bonds always well above. 600, 700 basic points. In master criteria, you have to be below 150 basic points. We were never fulfilling any uh, criteria of good uh, financial behavior. That is to say, somebody that lent to us made a mistake of it because they lent to a country that were not doing the right thing. That is why we, we will suffer a uh, haircut. Haircut is a minor statement, maybe a slight. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the next one. Well, that uh, are the, the interest payment and primary surplus. Uh, we, we, we have almost no primary surplus during all the period of convertibility, to give you an idea. Next one. This is adjusted primary surplus. It's not totally adjusted, but I try to avoid some of the creative accounting. There are more, but I, I, I did what is the most simple step to correct a wrong, account of, uh, wrong uh, accounting practice. Next one. Uh, next one. I will not have time. Lesson from Ar the Argentine experience for fiscal policy in emerging countries. One thing that is very important, I think, and is a key point that I would like to, 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 m to, sh to point out for the future is rollover of the principle of the debt is not guaranteed. The main reason of the crisis was we were not able to roll over the debt. To roll over the principle for us was a terrible problem. And that is perhaps one of the main difficulties now today in, in Brazil. In Brazil, they don't have the same problem as we have, but rollover the debt is not so easy with so shallow capital market. And that is a key difference 
adding to the problem that Pedro mentioned in Chile. They have very deep capital markets. The depth of the capital markets is a big difference when you, uh, you make uh, errors. Uh, I, I point out there is a need to self-insurance against negative shock. If you don't have capital market, you have to be very careful. You have to save for the bad times, for the rainy days. And you have all the time to think that you don't have the room for maneuver that the industrial country has. I mean, we, under currency war, you have to be very careful with your fiscal policy. If you don't have capital market, you, you have to be more careful. And that was the key mistake of Argentine policy in the 90s. Okay. Good fiscal institution are a key ingredient of good economic policy. They cannot be replaced by the monetary or exchange rate policy. Let me point out in the following way. This was something that was in a paper in 1981 by, by Sargent and Wallace. And the unpleasant monetary is arithmetic. If you maintain the monetary rule, it's not enough to deal with the, the situation we face. I think uh, fiscal policy is important and you have to be careful. Uh, well, the default and the bank increases in a very highly dollarized economy doubles the burden of the public debt. If you have a very dollarized economy, devaluation is a terrible tool to deal with the problem because as every, every creditor, all your liabilities are in dollars, the problem of a devaluation is a disaster. Going for the, the next one. Uh, well, I told you well, we, which were the negative external shock, Asia and Russia, Brazil, flow the real, the strong dollar, remember Clinton. Uh, capital market were reduced when the market realized that the shock was permanent. Uh, my concluding remark was the bad luck. Argentine was intensive in neighborhood countries using the outside capital market and in commodity. All the shocks were negative and we suffered the consequence. Next one. Well, this is, this is the export price index and explain you what, what happened to us. Next one. Well, this is the devaluation, next one. Next one. Well, that is uh, what has happened. Um, we have a terrible capital outflow at the end of, 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 of the crisis and uh, that was the reason why we suffered so much and suffered such, such meltdown. Next one. Uh, well, what were the political issues? Our politicians took the decision, as in other countries, always late, but let me tell you that nominal adjustment are obviously difficult to achieve. I was Minister of Defense, and I remember I have the visit of the Germany Minister of Defense, and I was reducing the nominal wage of our Army, our Navy, and our Air Force by 12%. And he asked me, you feel safe uh, doing that? <laughs> I never thought that can be possible. If I have to do that, I don't know how to enforce discipline. What I mean by that is uh, we, we did our best to deal with the crisis when we have in the crisis. It was not enough. I, I try as hard as I can to, to avoid the disaster. But when you have such a disequilibrium, you need a, a leadership that is, is uh, so so important, so demanding that uh, we were not able to to have in charge of, of, of our ship. Uh, well, there in my presentation you will see uh, that we have uh, tried to to enforce our defense, but they they were not enough with such big hole in the fiscal account. Okay, next one. 
What, we, what are the, the problems today? Well, we have a banking crisis, as uh, Luis Ramirez mentioned. Our banks are, uh, have a negative net worth. That, that is easy to imagine that you deposit in banks that the assets are lower than the liabilities. That is a minor consideration, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we have a problem there. The government defaulted on all its bonds. I mean, we are, we are now having a larger debt than before the devaluation because the government issued new debt. The government is paying the new debt. The old debt is not being paid at all. Um, we have a problem. For example, let me say, one ambassador of Argentina said the other day to our press uh, that the foreign community is forgetting the debt. Imagine they will forget 130 billion. But uh, that is the, the way we are addressing the issues, but uh, we have a problem. Social unrest with 20% of unemployment is not s easy after suffering until 19, uh, the year 2002, four year of recession. Fiscal and monetary policy are not consistent yet. I will explain later what I mean by that. And um, we have problem, a stock problem and flow problems that uh, are not so easy. For example, maybe in the margin, the banks are having, uh, making loans and receiving deposits and they have a, a margin there. But on, in the margin, it's different from in the average. In the average, they are bankrupt, and the idea that they will have time to recover through flows is, uh, is very difficult to accept. Okay, next. Now I will try to address the, the recent development, the last year and a half that we have a very dramatic recovery in GDP. What are the explanation of that? Next one. This is the recovery. As you see, we have a recovery, although we have not been able to reach the, the level previous to the crisis. We recover from the 80% of GDP to something close to 90% of GDP. Investment fall to almost 40% of what was before. Now is around 65%. We are not investing in net terms. I mean, we are covering only depreciation. Next one. Uh, when you discuss, and you know, in Brazil there is a lot of discussion of what is the example to follow. The Chile or the Chile example of the Argentine example. The chill example is something that you build through many years of effort, saving, good allocation, reputation. Our example is a very difficult, a very different one. We forget about our indebtedness and have some room for maneuver. Uh, and the idea of going through that approach is attractive, uh, but at the end I will try to explain why this is not uh, something you can uh, profit in the long run. The recovery is a very important one, but uh, if you compare with Chile and with Brazil, we are far below them. One of the explanation of the recovery is the previous fall. Uh, that is something you have to have in mind. Okay, next one. Next one. This is another index. This is the index of services uh, because mainly the information from Argentina came in terms of in manufacturing. This is services. As you see, we have a big recovery in services. Uh, <coughs> one of the explanation, for example, what has happened with construction? Without capital market, without 
financial uh, uh, banking sector, how the building industry can recover? Well, there is one explanation. The people want to save in something. One of the things they save is in real estate. The, uh, we are not using the financial market, the capital market. We say building houses or building apartments, and that is the explanation of the recovery. That is not a long-term recovery. Okay, next one. Uh, that is the growth rate of the previous recovery of Argentina after a big fall. As you know, we suffered the stop and go a lot for a long period of time. The recovery we are having now is not different from the past. Next one. Well, this is the context. Uh, I, I compare uh, the, how do I say, the parameters, the parameters of a recovery. Look, we are a very dollarized economy the dollar devalue a lot against the euro. It's like in the gold standard if you, dis if you discover gold in California. Remember, in the 90s and the first uh, decade of the 20th century, the economy grew a lot at one level. Why? Because the supply of gold increased a lot, and we, if we, you have fixed parity with the gold, and that creates excess supply of money. And that is the explanation. Never we have something like that. Second, export price. The export price are growing at very fast rate. Remember, we have 14% increase in our export price and the interest rate is 1%. That is a very negative interest rate. Well, there you, you see the number. Next one. Uh, capit one of the reasons of the recovery is capital outflow is decreasing. Now, what is the explanation? Why the Argentine people suffering the lack of financial system, suffering the lack of capital market? Why they are not sending money abroad? Well, the reason is again, oh, we send so much that we don't need anymore. <laughs> okay? That is the reason why uh, we send a lot. To send more, you need incentives, a new crisis. If there is not a new crisis, our prices are increasing a lot. The cost of interest is going down. Our neighbors are performing very well. Obviously, we retain our uh, income in our country, and there is no capital outflow. OK, next. Well, this is exceptional price. Remember. <coughs> that we are producer of soybean. So we are, when I mean a producer, we are one of the biggest in the world. It's like petroleum in Venezuela. The price of soybean, look the number. I, I, I always look this number because I, f I was minister in April 2001. Next minister enjoy. It's like winning the lottery. <laughs> okay, that is. A okay, next one. Well, this is a s the explanation of soybean. I'm sorry, my secretary forget to translate the the, the titles, but it's soybean supply and demand world and China, and uh, that is something that I think we have to have in mind. The, the world is going in the Argentine or South America direction. The world is demanding a lot of natural resources and is complementary of ourselves. That is, we have good opportunities in the future if we do the right thing, okay? Because our wealth is in natural resources, and the demand for natural resources is growing and growing and growing. OK, the next one. Well, let me go over a problem that we never explain very well in Argentina nor in the rest of the world. During the last 30 years, 
35 years. We made many mistakes. Our policies were wrong. We have institutional weakness. But there is another explanation, very important to understand Argentine problem. We are very rich in natural resources, and the price of natural resources went down. But not went down by the little, went down in an incredible way. This is the soybean price deflated by the PPI, the producer price index. If you it, want to explain why we, we were so rich at the beginning of the 70s, the price is twice, three times what the price of today it is, even though it has increased 100%. I mean, the price of our natural resources went down during the last 30 years. And that is a good explanation of our poverty. It's not the only, but I mean a good share of our problem is the deterioration of the price of what we produce. Obviously, with good, good allocation signal, we move from that area to other areas. The difference is, in that area, we enjoy the surplus of being the owner of the resources. In other areas, we don't have such advantage. I mean, we will receive only what we produce. OK, next one. Uh, well, that is uh, the, the adjustment. Sometimes in my country and in South America, there is a discussion of if you can avoid the adjustment. This is not true. You will have an intelligent adjustment or a wrong adjustment. Adjustment we, you will have always. The way that we adjust was the worst. We, were, we suffered a chaotic adjustment. The constraint, the budget constraint, apply for everybody. You cannot avoid that. The adjustment was this fall in import was perhaps the highest adjustment of all the history of Argentina. The current account surplus went to almost 12% of GDP, to give you an idea of the adjustment we suffered. Okay. In my own account, the adjustment was almost 30% of GDP. We reduced the expenditure in an incredible way that we went current account deficit to a very high current account surplus under very, diff di uh, very bad external price. That gives you an idea of the adjustment. Well, that is monetary indicator. Go, go, go. go. One, 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 one point. This is important for the future. As I study in Chicago, I pay a lot of attention to monetary accounts. You know, I learned here that inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. That was a very important. Look what is happening in Argentina. Pay attention to it. We are issuing a lot of money. And nobody understands very well why there is such demand of domestic currency. The problem is if we come back to the old times in income velocity of money. But let me give you that case to think about it. Maybe this is related to flotation. Maybe this is related to the financial taxes. Maybe this is related to a tax evasion. Maybe this is a transitory phenomenon. If it's a transitory phenomenon, we will see in the next years different problem of what we have seen until now. OK. Uh, this is uh, the, the fiscal expenditure. Here you will see the adjustment. Uh, we did a very sharp adjustment under the valuation. Now the primary expenditure is recovering. This is taxes. Taxes are recovering. On, um, 
obviously expenditure fall a lot and now it's increasing, even though we have a primary surplus now. It's not enough to cover interest payment, but we have a primary surplus. Okay, next one. Sorry, because I'm taking a lot of time, but I, I will try to finish. Go again, go again. Go again. Uh, well, risk and opportunities. The international regional environment were very favorable to Argentina. The problem is what will happen to us is something that everybody knows will happen, happen. I mean, the interest rate in the United States will not remain at 1%. This will have an impact on commodity price and in capital flows, and that is the the real challenge we will face very soon. Okay, next one. Uh, well, the government is not solving some important structural problem. As we know, that renegotiation is in a slow motion problem. I mean, we are talking, but uh, we have no final uh, negotiation. The signal to private utilities there we have perhaps, and let me address now one of the most important thing in Argentina. As to, to exit the convertibility, the currency board, we apply a new technology, uh, asymmetric specification. Will never be applied again. We, we, we suffer a very terrible experience. What was asymmetric specification was something like tailor-made evaluation. For some, we made a devaluation of 200, for others, of no devaluation. For utilities, for example, there was no devaluation. The price of gas, for example, the million of British German units remain freeze. Uh, we are su suffering now a shortage. Two years ago, when we made the asymmetric specification, we told the, the public opinion we will suffer terrible shortage. Why? Because you, we are freezing the price well below equilibrium. In the short run, the shortage is minimal. In the long run, I, as I explained, let me say, I explain publicly, I am not very successful, I say, the demand is negative slope. And the elasticity is increasing with time. The supply is positive slope and is increasing the elasticity with time. The shortage in the short run is very small. In the long run, it's dramatic. Now we are suffering. Economics 101. Uh, that is what we are suffering now. Labor reform. Well, I explain you what we are suffering, and um, I think uh, one of most distorted market in Argentina is labor market. What were the change in regulation we did in the last two years? The change was to overtax labor and to put um, European regulation. Obviously, we have been growing very fast, create a lot of employment, but no employment, I mean in the formal economy. And that is uh, another problem we have to fix. Uh, I took more time than I, I, I should. Let me finish giving you a final uh, perspective. We made mistake, we had bad luck, we have institutional weakness. All of them are important. But perhaps the most important one was the cultural problem. Culture, I mean, but how you think, the software you have in your mind. That is perhaps the most difficult part that we have to change in Argentina and perhaps in South America, and I will let for the next panel when I, wo I will speak about what I mean by that. But let me give you one example, one important example. When 
the president, former president announced the default in the parliament, the parliament explodes in happiness, clapping everybody. It's like you say, I am bankrupt, and everybody's happy. <laughs> Something is wrong there. Something is wrong. What, what, what is the mindset that produces such output? That is the real problem we have to answer ourselves. And the idea that the others will pay for you is behind this clapping. And it's not understanding well, how the work works, how, how the, the society works. The idea of not paying, and I, I acknowledge we will have to have a haircut, maybe scalping, but what is the reason of the haircut? The reason of the haircut is the difference between your willingness to pay and your ability to pay. That is the bridge to solve that. But the idea that the other are paying, and this is for the Brazilian, the other are paying because they are idiots and has not discovered yet your ability, <laughs> is not understanding the long run, the retaliation are subtle, uh, are more difficult to, to see in the short run. If you are myopic, you don't take, you don't put uh, relevance to that. But what is happening to an economy that is not uh, addressing the debt problem? Well, one of, 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 of the consequences is nobody will be, um, would like to invest there. And the retaliation, the real retaliation, is not uh, uh, a battle cuisine, as they think somebody will come to collect our debt. No. The real retaliation is that you are reducing your capital stock and you are going and getting poorer and poorer. You will have the outcome of the haircut you are looking for. If you are looking for a 90% haircut, you will be as poor as to justify the 90% haircut. It's not the other way around. You will you have to try to reduce the haircut. Why? Because there is a complementarity between the success of your creator and yourself. And that is a key, a key figure, a, a key uh, thought you, we have to change in the mind of our people. It's not a problem only of leadership. It's a problem of our culture. Let me give the last example. Something that I learned here. When you play tennis, to play tennis, the game needs some rules. You know, you have to throw the ball to the rectangle in the, the other side of the net. And you play by those rules. And the winner is who performs better under those rules. But imagine that you think that you play whatever you, uh, you, you can. But at the end, you go to the black and change the number of the game. <laughs> the idea that you are at the same time the player and the judge <laughs> means that nobody wants to play in the long run. <laughs> the government of law is like the tennis game. There is an incentive there, and also, there is an incentive in private property. If you don't have private property, nobody cares about resources. Understanding that is perhaps our biggest challenge. Let me say to finish, I fight a lot in my country, and obviously you, you see my, my presentation that I, I am very passionate about what has happened to us. And I, I would try to do my most to overcome our failures. And I have the hope that finally we will be able to redress our defects and to correct our failures. Let's finish 
with the shock that I use always in my presentation in Argentina. I have been a presidential candidate. One way they attack me all the time is because they say I am an orthodox economist. And they say all the time, Lopez Murphy is always going by the book. Let me explain you how I answer that to the general audience in Argentina. I, the other day I said, it's true, I'm going by the book, and I'm not enough uh, clever to change the book. But think about it, that. Suppose that you take a flight, like I take from Buenos Aires to Chicago, and the commander of the, of the flight said to the, to the passenger, I will put aside the book. <laughs> I will not go by the manual. I will land in a very different way. <laughs> you will be terrified there. The case is always in favor of the book. To be against the book, you have to be more clever than we are. Thank you very much. Mr. Lopez Murphy for a great presentation. Uh, in consideration for the rest of our speakers who have to take flights this afternoon, we will limit the questions to two and then have you know remaining questions in the economic panel. Mr. Murphy, you were, as you said, two uh, presidential candidates against La Rua, and all your advertising back then was to pledge the dollar to the peso. You were posted were everywhere in Argentina. So what would you, or what could you have done different than La Rua so that this disaster would not have happened? Well, let me tell, let me tell about my personal story that uh, will help you to understand the problems. When Brazil devalued in 1999, January 1999, at the beginning of the campaign from the presidential election at the end of 1999, I, I was member of the staff of Mr. De La Rua and said, we will not be able to follow with the speech we, we are using because the external situation changed dramatically and we have to move from other policy. I mean, we will need to make a terrible adjustment because the, the price level that is relevant to, for us has been reduced a lot. And we will have to reduce, and that means something a very difficult program, and we need uh, to earn our uh, legiti legitimacy during the campaign because to deliver such adjustment, you need the popular support. Without that, uh, you will not be able uh, to deliver that adjustment. That was the real problem during the government of De La Rua. He didn't feel uh, with the legitimacy, legitimacy to do such adjustment without announcing it before in the election. Well, uh, in those months, as I po push a lot, to change the speech, uh, he decided that he had to win the election. And if he said what I advised him to say, he answered to me, I will be defeated. And I answered to him, if you win without saying anything, you will not be able to govern. That was the, the, the delay. Finally, I, I decided to speak in public in April 1999, and they expelled me from the staff. That was, that was the story. They expelled me from the staff. After the election, the president asked me, you love a lot your country. You know the truth. Uh, we will have to make a very large adjustment. And we didn't say anything about that. Don't put your... Uh, I was furious with him. 
But he said, you have to put before your country than your uh, uh, scorn, your, your you, you, you are angry, but you have to be loyal to your country. Well, that was the reason why I was uh, in Ministry of Defense. But uh, the, the real problem was during the campaign. Then, during the government, uh, the problem to address the issue, we have the plan. The problem was the coalition was destroyed trying to implement a fiscal adjustment, and they, they were not trained to, to sustain the government. The poli uh, you know, the political uh, speech, the, a leader is a storyteller. You have to explain the people where you come from, what are the problems you face, and how you solve them. If you have been lying during the storytelling, it's very difficult to live in a very difficult and rough time. And uh, that is my explanation of what went wrong. Uh, I, if I come, go back, here again, uh, I tell you uh, my approach will be similar of what uh, we try to do. Mr. Lopez Murphy, I have a great respect for you because you step in as a Minister of Economy in a moment of real crisis when nothing could be done. I am a member of the Argentine Diplomatic Corps and I always study that we suffer an unfair treatment in subsidies, in agriculture subsidies. And I think it's true. I think our country do not make any subsidies. And as you say, we are now fo uh, focused or we are uh, competent in making our natural resources. But in the 70s, you explained that the prices of agricultural products have been low. Do you think in the 70s it was because of the subsidies and the war between subsidies with the European in Union? And if, if this is true, and if we don't export subsidies, so we, we are suffering from a culture that we have, to make, we have to change the culture of the leaders of the United States, as we also have to change our culture, because uh, we, must, we must be equal. OK. Uh, let me. Let me say th the following. The, the trend on our price are due, the fall of, uh, of the price of our production, are due to mainly two things. First, technological change. The technology that was discovered during the last 35 years or, or implemented was of the type of land saving. Uh, we have land that is a very good quality, and the rest of the world has not the same endowment of ourselves. But the technological discovery were to save land. I mean, they were able to increase production a lot with the same uh, size of uh, land. I mean, just against the Ricardian uh, forecast. You remember Ricardian uh, thought was the land will be scarce and scarce and scarce. The truth is technological discovery increase the size of the land. I mean, save land. It's the same as increase the size of the land. That was one of the plans. The other is something that I, 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 I agree with you, is the commercial policy of the most developed country that uh, subsidize and uh, distort the price of what we produce. That affects a lot of us. And it's true that nothing will help more us than freedom at the world trade. I mean, if we can obtain full liberalization of trade, we will be a lot, uh, we will receive a lot of uh, advantage. And I am fully uh, be, uh, backing that policy, I believe world trade liberalization is like discovering another China. China is a, China and the development of China is very important for the world because 
that was the the growth uh, the the leader of the leader of the growth in the the last 10 15 years but if we liberalize trade it's like discovering another china uh, but the problem with that is behind our abilities this is a parameter for us if they open it's better for us it's better for everybody but we cannot control that policy something that is difficult for us is we all the time uh, speak against subsidies by others but the problem is we are taxing our producers imagine that we are talking a lot about subsidies by others but at the same producer that are suffering uh, distorted competition because of subsidy, we are taxing them. And um, the problem of our internal policies is more important in my view than foreign policies. Any, in any case, I fully agree with you that uh, full-scale liberalization of trade is perhaps the best policy, not only for allocation of resources, but to improve fairness and equality at world level. You gave a very informative presentation of, of the problems that Argentina went through, some of their own making, some of bad luck, as you said. And then you also made an interesting presentation about the reactions of the, the government took to the problems. Those were not very reassuring to me as a, not, not a specialist. Uh, you have a list of some of the mistakes made here. As you look forward now, is there any reason to be optimistic about the adjustments that Argentina will be making in the next uh, five years? Um, is there any likelihood, for example, that foreign investors will be willing to go into Argentina on any significant scale given what's been going on with the default on, on foreign debt? Labor markets, as you said, have gotten worse rather than better, and they weren't good to start with. The underground economy. I remember Carola Pacino showing me some estimates when she was in the government that it was maybe 40 percent of the workers were already at that time in the underground economy. So I'd like to be optimistic. Uh, I, I like Argentina a lot, but you, have, you didn't give us much reason to be optimistic, and that may be the truth. But are there any reasons as we look forward, given all these crises and given the bad responses in many respects of the government to these crises? Uh, to be optimistic about what will develop in the next uh, five to ten years, given a, that you're not getting such bad luck from outside. Let's say the luck is average luck and things are reasonable, but what about the internal responses? As always with you, it's a difficult question. <laughs> uh, let me say, I, I think the consequence of bad regulation and wrong policies are uh, suffering immediately. And um, I believe this will be uh, part of our discussion in the political arena. I mean, wrong policies, if we are democratic society, free press, Finally, wrong policies will be defeated. You know, uh, uh, I know that there is a learning process. In the short run, the policies are very bad. Let me give you an example. The price of oil is growing at world market. The chief of cabinet spoke the other day saying, we have to have responsible price prices. Nobody knows what is that. Uh, I know market prices, not responsible prices. Responsible price means freeze price, uh, frozen prices. I mean, uh, we are making a lot of mistakes. Uh, and from that point of view, the short run uh, is not good. Uh, we, ha we were not able to use such a good opportunity as we have last Half year and a half. Uh, 
let me say, I am the leader of opposition. I, I have to fight in my country. If I said everything will be wrong, uh, I will not have the, the spirit to fight. And I love my country a lot. Let me be optimistic against any hope. And I, I, will, I will always think that we will be able to correct our mistake, to, to reveal our institution, to improve the allocation of our resource, and to reveal our, our reputation. Uh, we have a, a very important person in our history that was uh, Juan Bautista Alberdi was uh, the writer of our constitution. And he said many years ago, 150 years ago, uh, we have to follow what is practiced in those countries that are successful. And I, I am preaching again the same, the same story. And I hope that we will be successful. Anyway, I'm a skeptic in the show up to answer your question. We, in Chicago, when I was a student, uh, there was a question that said, true, false, or uncertain? The show run, let me use uncertain. Thank you very much. <laughs>